welcome back. So, we had seen in the previous lecture that for the inventory control problem, the problem the question of that of asking how much inventory should I be ordered, should I be ordering, this question is actually not well posed. So, the amount of inventory to be ordered is depends on the amount of stock that you have available and that is not known because that itself depends on the demand that would have that would evolve from the start of the time period up until that time, right. So, as a consequence of this we realize that the way to pose the problem uh, at the stage of when we are trying to plan for what we should be doing is to pose the is to is to ask not how much inventory should you be ordering, but what is what is going to be the action plan. In other words, what is how, what uh, how much inventory are you going to order for each value of this of the inventory level that you uh, of the stock that you find. So, how much what action are you going to take for each value of the state that you are going to act that you would actually encounter during the problem in in real time in the course of act, uh, when you are actually in the field. So, what we can what we can uh, compute is uh, at, at the start of the problem is not the actual actions, but but these functions. These functions we had we, we call these strategies or decision rules. We call them strategies or decisions rules mu 0 to mu n minus 1 was called a policy. Another term for this is often what is often uh, that is often used is a control law. So, mu 0 to mu n minus 1 is often called the control law ok. So, let us give uh, let us give uh, say uh, see an example of such a uh, such a control law. For instance, one could say that for it, it can actually be shown that for some reasonable uh, reasonable forms of the cost function, the optimal policy is to actually at any time k is it takes the following form mu k of x k takes the form that you do that of x k minus s k if x k is less than s uh, S k and 0 otherwise. Here S k uh, is a is a suitable threshold Now what does this mean? what how do I interpret this policy? this uh, this policy is is telling me a plan of action. It is telling me that, it tells me it defines for me a threshold s k and it tells me the following that if your if my inventory x k falls below the threshold s k. So, if x k is less than s k then all then what how much how much should I be ordering I should be ordering in order to to top up to the level s k. If my in, if my inventory is less than s k then I order whatever is the deficit so as to top up up till s k. If my inventory is larger than or equal to s k then I do not need to do anything then I uh, then I do not order any further ok. So, in other words what I what you what you get is is a sequence of such thresholds that uh, such that your inventory gets when you keep you only monitor if, if your inventory is falling below that particular threshold. Once it falls below the threshold you just top it up up to that particular threshold and and let uh, and and then carry on again till the till it again falls below that threshold right. So, and in finite horizon problems the you would also get that this threshold s k is which is a so this s k is is a threshold that define that is a parameter that defines this particular policy it is it is defined it is telling you what to do as a function uh, for at each step at each time step as a function of the inventory that you would see right. So, this s k would be would also differ from one time step to the other. So, there would uh, you would the, the 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 correct threshold that we need to look at that that one needs to keep is also will also vary from time to time. So, usually the so they so the inventory then it tends to take this sort of a form that uh, at 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 any time uh, at any time k you uh, when you order you fulfill up you you bump it bump up your inventory up till time up to s k then over over that time 
over the time period demand re gets realized the inventory falls further one, and then when you are at the next time step at time k plus 1 you again order more and bump up bump it up to sk plus 1 then again again the uh, uh, the the inventory falls and again you again you refill and so on this is how uh, uh, this is how this particular policy would work right so once again at the uh, at the uh, danger of of uh, belaboring myself i'm again repeating that this is this is not mu k doesn't actually tell you how uh, when we are choosing mu k we are not actually choosing an exact inventory level but rather we are saying what is going to be the plan for every for every possible value of inventory that you could have so that means for every value of xk we are telling uh, we have a plan here which tells us what exactly we should be doing okay all right so now with this now we we uh, we can we can go back to the original stochastic control problem that we had written not the example but the original stochastic control problem that we had written which was this one and then we can ask ourselves what exactly are we solving here well the goal is was we said we want to minimize this total cost incurred and we said we wanted to do this by taking a sequence of actions but then we realized that we cannot actually define a sequence of actions at the time instant that this problem is written uh, for which this time it's, uh, for which this problem is written this problem is written even before the realization of this uh, of the entire uncertainty and therefore it is asking us to choose actions even before the information that is available to us so therefore what we can choose is plans of actions or policies so the problem here therefore this problem is the is the problem is to is to choose a policy to minimize to minimize the total cost okay so is to choose a policy that minimizes it. so a general stochastic control problem takes this form where you are minimizing this the expected total cost this is your terminal cost these are the stage wise costs and what we were this is being minimized over all mu 0 to mu n minus 1 each mu k is a function that maps the state space at time k to the to the uh, to the actions that you can choose so in this case for example there is let's let's suppose capital x k is suppose the state space at time k this maps this to let's suppose capital u the space of actions at time k so capital uk is the space of actions available at time k now so one example of in the, of this we had already seen we, we saw that the state space in the in the inventory control problem was uh, the state could be any any real number uh, so the state space was r and the actions we were allowing we were only allowing non negative actions so so capital uk therefore was uh, was the non negative real line now we can uh, there are also problems in which the action that you can take can be constrained by how much uh, by what state you are actually in so there can be a for example a there are problems where uh, you can define another a set u tilde k of xk this is the set of feasible actions u tilde k of xk feasible actions at time k when the state is xk so 
So, when the true state is x k and when the when you are at time k the set of feasible the, the actions that you can choose is is uh, is for has to be from the set u tilde u tilde k of x k. So, in that case any policy that you choose must respect this particular uh, this particular constraint that you have to choose a feasible uh, for a policy to be admissible it has to uh, it ha must map the, uh, the the state to an action that is present in this. So, so you so your mu k should have the must must satisfy must satisfy that mu k of x k is in u k tilde of x k. So this is something that is required from uh, from the uh, from any from any policy that you choose. So, we have seen therefore, in the inventory control problem uh, and uh, we have seen all the uh, all of these elements, we have seen that there is a discrete time system that uh, there is a system who that evolves in discrete time whose uh, the whose evolution is given by a dynamical system like this. So, it is a system whose state evolves in discrete time in this in this sort of way. We have seen that in the in our case this is equal was equal to x k plus u k minus w k. We have seen that uh, w k which was noise we, we, we had that these were independent across time. and not known while while choosing UK. We also saw that there was a the, the action that has to be chosen there was a constraint on the action. So, remember we had u k greater than equal to 0. Now, in this case uh, the constraint actually does not change with the with the state of the system, it it only is uh, it is just it, it, it is it is a it is a constraint that is the same for every time and every uh, and every state, but in general there could be uh, constraints that that could also be state dependent and time dependent. But nonetheless the the, the key element of the problem here is that there, there can be constraints on actions. So, therefore, policies a policy must respect this right a policy a policy must satisfy so any policy must satisfy constraints and we saw that the cost also had this very nice form. The cost had the form at like this which was if in this following in this form So, this in our problem was the, the terminal cost in our problem was ca R, capital R of x n and the stage wise cost in our problem was R of R, K, R of x k plus plus c times u k. Right? So, you, can, you will notice that there was no uh, there was no w k in this uh, uh, in uh, the, there was no w k out here. Uh, so, there is a w k here, but there is no w k here that is quite all right this is this is the more general this is the general version uh, general version of the problem. Okay. So, so the lesson in short is that we are so now uh, this has given us a way of uh, by which we are we are going to uh, our complete problem formulation of a stochastic control problem where we are taking a 
sequence of decisions over uh, over various over over some finitely many time steps. We have the the elements of the problem are that there is an additive cost, there could there is there is a sequence of actions that need to be chosen in uh, that are chosen in real time. But what we are choosing when we are is is we are making a plan for actions. We are making so what we are choosing is this policy mu zero to mu n minus one, which maps the the state at time k at e, where mu k time uh, maps the state at time k to an action at time k. Now, this policy must also satisfy the constraint. So, mu k of x k has to be uh, ha has to be uh, has to be in u tilde k of x k where u tilde k of x k is the set of feasible actions at time k when the state is x k. Now, when uh, when we choose so the way the system evolves is as follows then we when we choose uh, when we choose an action when we choose uh, a policy mu k when we choose a policy mu 0 to mu n minus 1 what happens? what happens is this policy is chosen even before any any uncertainty gets realized. So, a, even before the first random variable which is uh, first piece of noise which is w 0 gets realized. So, this this policy is chosen at that stage. So, when we choose a policy what here is how the system evolves. First you have your your initial state x 0 gets realized then as a function of this initial state you choose an action u 0. And the function that you need that that tells you what uh, what action is to be chosen is this policy. So, from here using the policy mu 0 using the policy mu 0. So, using the policy mu 0 we get our action u 0. Then nature pitches in nature pitches in with uh, uh, with w0. So, nature introduces the noise in the system. So, therefore, as a result of of the action that you have chosen and the, pre, the, the, the previous state and the noise that is present you then get your next state x1. So, x1 comes out as f1 uh, sorry f0 of x0 u0 w0 where now u0 is a function of x0. And then this goes on goes on again. So, then again you have x1, x1 knowing x1 you choose u1 using the as a function of that you choose you, uh, you choose u1 and the function that tells you to tells you what you want to choose is is the function mu 1 this gives you u 1 then comes w 1 that then results in x 2 which is now f 1 of x 1 mu 1 w 1 and so on. This is this is this is what happens uh, at each time step you eventually reach time step n where now you have you have a, a time step n minus 1 where you are in state n minus 1 you have you choose you have you use the mu n minus 1 that has been decided to choose u n minus 1 then w n minus 1 comes in and what you get is your final state x n which is f n minus 1 of x n minus 1 mu n minus 1 of x n minus 1 comma w n minus 1. Now, the important thing to note here is is the role that the policy plays. The policy uh, does does two things one is of course, it chooses the action that you need to choose ok. It chooses an action for you it tells you. So, here for example, mu 0 of x 0 is, is, is the u 0 it is the action that you need to choose. But in addition to this the policy also also decides the probability distribution of the next time step. So, if you look at x 1 x 1 is now a random variable right it is the state that will get evolved that will evolve at the next time step that is a function of the noise. 
but it is a function of noise as well as the previous step, previous state and the action that you have chosen. So, by choosing mu 0 in an appropriate way one can decide the probability with what probability you are going to get various states. So, one can influence uh, indirectly the probability distribution of the state through by, by choosing uh, through the choice through the choice of the policy. So, the, pol the, so the policy uh, the, the policy basically determines also the probability with which various new states are going to get realized as a fun uh, given the given the earlier state. In other words the policy determines this probability distribution. The probability distribution of of the next state given the previous state. This, this probability distribution is a function of the policy, uh, it depends on the policy that you have chosen. So, it depends on, on mu 0 till mu k. Okay. One, uh, one thing I have had forgotten to mention that uh, one of the e uh, a, a, a shorthand for policy often when you have mu 0 to mu n minus 1, a shorthand for that for policy of that is often used is is the letter pi we use the greek letter pi to denote a policy so this this will often be denoted as p superscript pi of xk plus 1 prob conditional probability of the next times state given the con uh, given the current state so with this what we have done is 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 set up the problem of uh, of stochastic control uh, where we are taking decisions in, in a sequence and we have set it up formally as a problem of, of deciding a sequence of functions. The sequence of functions is what is called a policy. What we will now do uh, in the next lecture is consider look at an alternative model where, uh, where the next the, the, uh, the state at the next time step is not given in this kind of explicit way as a function of the previous step, but rather in an abstract way where, uh, where you, are, you only know the probability distribution of the next step of the next state given the current state and current action. This is the model that is often used in the field of operations research and it goes by the name of Markov decision processes. Uh, we will look at this prob this this model in the case in the in the setting of a fine where you have finitely many states and finitely many actions. So, this is this is the agenda for the next uh, for the for the next uh, for the next for the next video. Thank you.